Hello everyone and welcome to Bourbon Bites, whiskey reviews with an 80s twist. I'm your host Clifton and good to see you all after a bit of a break. Um, as some of you know, I was in New Orleans for the first time last week uh, around this time uh, for my first ever New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Now this festival has been going on for quite a while, but I've never had the chance to go. I've always wanted to go. So this past year or this year, 2024, I decided to... Um, Make the trip down. So, kind of want to take tonight to talk a little bit about the festival, about my experience, some of the classes I took, um, some of the great pours I had, um, some of the amazing food that New Orleans had to offer, um, and just kind of talk about some new releases that that have kind of came in over the past few weeks that I haven't had a chance to talk about. Um, so good to see so many of you here today. Um, I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. Those of you watching live, um, so I set four glasses in front of me, right? And I sit down like 6.55, I'm like, I'm about to go live, I'm all set, I'm ready to go. I'm like, wait, I only have three bottles of whiskey in front of me. I'm like, what was the other one I was going to review? And I grabbed a backup bottle because I was like, well, if I, can't, if I don't think of anything else, I'll just do this one. But then like literally 6.59, I'm like, oh my God, how can I talk about New Orleans without making a uh, Sazerac cocktail? So <laughs> I ran in the kitchen. I know normally you, you don't always have it over ice. Actually, I prefer mine with an ice cube in it. Ran into the kitchen, grabbed my Sazerac rye, my herb Saint liqueur, and my uh, Peshad's bitters. Um, I should know how to say that because I toured the Sazerac house as part of my trip. Um, but yeah, I made me a uh, Sazerac, of course, with simple syrup as well. Um, yeah, it's a really quickly made <laughs> cocktail, one of my favorite cocktails. Normally, I'm a little more precise with my uh, measurements, but I didn't want to keep you guys longer. So maybe it's pace shows, probably. Um, who murdered the resolution? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's my signal. Hmm. My internet's been acting up. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I can swap it without ending the stream. Oh no. Did it go bad for everyone else? Bad video. Okay, okay. This is what happens when I don't go live for so long. Let me try one little swap. Um, let's see if this fixes it. If not, I have a couple of options couple of options to make it work. Let's see, let's see, let's see if this, hold on. Okay, okay, I'm working on it, working on it. I have I have a couple ways to fix this. It's like I said, it's been, it's been a while since I've done this, so. All right, let me, let me try something real quick. Let me, let me try this. Stick around. If it completely goes away, then um, come right back. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see if that improves things. I just I just changed the setting. Let me know if things get a little bit better. If not, I have a few other options. But I appreciate everyone being quick to tell me there's some audio issues or some video video issues. Um, yeah, that's just my computer. Basically, short story, um, my computer has two network adapters, and um, sometimes it defaults to the wrong one. So I just turned the other one on, so we'll see if that fixes things. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyways, um, yeah, quick little Sazerac, um, one of my favorite cocktails. So let me know if we get better from here. because I'm going to feel better from here after drinking this. I want to say hello to some folks while people are gathering here. Like I said, if, um, if it drops completely, Stick around on my channel, turn on notifications. I'll go back live, solves in place to um, fix these issues because I've had them before. I want to say hello to a few folks. James Taylor in the chat. Tony Bag of Donuts here. Taste and Sensibility. Doug, so great seeing you over the weekend. Um, so much fun. I know you you recorded a lot of stuff. Hopefully we'll see it on your channel soon. Uh, but yeah, so good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Donnie is here as well. Sugar Kitty, good to see you actually awake tonight. Appreciate, appreciate you stopping in. Um, yeah, that's me being late. <laughs> uh, Fred is here as well. I know you guys have been super active on Discord. I'm sorry I was kind of absent for a while, but I'm glad to be back. Um, <laughs> this is Oversight. He survived his trip. Welcome back. Well, thank you so much, Sofer. Hope you were doing well, my friend. Um, yep, Swan is here as well. Good to see you, Swan. And Gary Franchi. Oh, my gosh. Such a, such a great crowd. Adam Free is here as well. Um, <laughs> if you click it like this, if you click it like oh, that, oh, okay, that's that's uh, Celine Dion. I'm like, I, I was starting to see it like the metro station. If you love me like this, you can love me right back. That's what I that's what I was seeing that as. But 
I got you. I'm not going to try to attempt to be Celine Dion right now. Uh, the video, the video quality dropped. Okay. Let me try one thing. Hopefully this is in the stream. If it does, I promise I'll be right back on. Um, I have, let me try something real quick. All right, let me try this. All right, check, check, check. I'm still good. You guys still see me, hear me. All good still. Let me know. Let's see. Let's see if that fixed it. I just um, turned off one of the adapters. Let's see. Sometimes it's been my VPN, but I, I actually turned my VPN off. So, oh my god, you know what? My VPN freaking connected again. Okay, that's what it is. Hold on. Here, I'm still here. Are we still live? Are we still live? Are we good? Can you still give me a thumbs up if you can still see and hear me? My VPN reconnected, and I thought I turned it off, so I apologize. I think it's off now, so let's 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 proceed. I think we may have solved it. It was the VPN. Gosh, that one's so annoying. All right, we're good. All right, awesome. I think we fixed it. I think we fixed it, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely it definitely. Um, when I turned on that adapter thing, it turned on my VPN, which didn't help things at all. So. I think we're good. I think we're good. Thank y'all. By the way, 17 in the chat. Hello. Hopefully some new faces here. I've been on a couple of other streams, so good to see some new folks. Um, if you're new, hey, feel free to subscribe. I promise I don't always have internet issues. Um, but so great to see uh, so many faces. Say hello in the chat if, if you're new. We'd love to get to know you. But yeah, starting off with the Saturday. Good thing we haven't moved into your reviews yet. But what is your favorite uh, whiskey cocktail? Uh, I mean, there's uh, there's so many whiskey cocktails, but like for your traditional Favorite whiskey cocktail, what is your go-to? Oh no, the signal's dropping again, darn it. Shoot, okay, hmm. Let me know if the quality got bad. If it got bad, I'll try one last thing that I think might maybe do something. But if the audio is fine, we might can just keep rolling and just, just you know, I, I'm not in a rush to get things done today. Um, stuttering if it is back, okay. Let's see if it just does it once, because again, I just did a bunch of changes. Let's see if it just does it that once. If it does and then it's back, we're good. But um, I got one last thing to try. And I'll have to turn off the VPN again. But anyways, I'm just sitting here talking about this drink. I haven't drank it. My favorite is, um, like I said, a Sazerac. I love an Old Fashioned. I love a Manhattan. It depends on my mood, right? If I want to take my time with a cocktail, usually a Manhattan. If I just want something simple, either a Sazerac or a uh, Old Fashioned. So follow-up question to that. Do you typically use rye? Or bourbon in your whiskey cocktails. I, I I guess I'm a bit, I don't want to say a traditionalist, but um, I will say usually with an old fashioned, I'll use bourbon. With the Manhattan, I'll use rye. With the Sazerac, I'll use rye. So that's kind of like what I do, but I know people do it. They're all different ways. So I'm curious to hear what you guys do. Tony, what's up? Good to see you in the chat. Thanks for stopping in on your other account. Um, yeah, sorry about the internet issues, guys. I, I've just been out of, out of the flow, I guess, of doing it. So. <laughs> But we got some good whiskey to review tonight, so I want to make sure we're all fixed before we get into the reviews. So appreciate everyone's patience. Hey, hit the thumbs up if you are looking forward to some reviews of some new whiskeys from me, including some exclusives from the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Of course, if you saw the title of the video, I'm reviewing the brand new, well, it was brand new. It took me a long while to get it. Old Forester 1924. A bit controversial. Um, so I don't know if you can see that depending on, on video quality, but... Um, yeah, I picked this up at Bedmo. It was, it was like, it, it was back that day that I was, um, I think I told you all the story already. I was looking for e basic Eagle Rare when I was um, doing that stream a couple weeks ago where I was comparing Eagle Rare store picks to standard Eagle Rare. Um, so yeah, if you missed that stream, it was a fun one, but um, couldn't find regular Eagle Rare. So I had to be that guy that went up to the counter and was like, you guys got any Eagle Rare? I felt like such a tater, I swear. And they said, no, the only allocated stuff we've gotten in lately is this. Okay, okay, I've been wanting to try that. So I picked up a bottle and some standard Buffalo trays. I felt full tanner mode, but um, yeah, I have not opened this. As you can tell, it's still sealed. So we're going to do a fresh crack review of that here shortly. Um, but I want to make sure we're good with it. It hasn't dropped in a minute, so it, uh, we might be back good with internet. Let me know how it's looking and sounding on your end, whether you're watching on your TV, phone, tablet, PlayStation, uh, 
Nintendo 64? I don't know. I don't know if people like hack things these days. I don't know. I saw someone like watching like or trying to pull up Google on like an old um I think it wasn't it wasn't Nintendo 64. It was like a it was like one of the first, it maybe it was a Wii or something, like something like one of the ones that had a web browser built in. It looks so bad. But um, yeah, I don't know if they can play videos, but they can definitely pull up Google search. Donnie said he was at a bar recently where a guy was drinking old fashioned with tequila. Interesting. I know um, I've kind of done the opposite. I've done a bourbon Rita, which was a margarita made with bourbon, which is kind of like a whiskey sour, but it had the lime and it had all that. That was actually really good. I had that in, I think it was Seattle, maybe Seattle or San Francisco. One of those fancy cocktail bars. Um, really cool to try, but yeah, te old fashioned with tequila. Now that you mentioned that, I've had a mezcal old fashioned, which kind of makes more sense because it's a little. But yeah, a mezcal old fashioned was really good. I mean, to be fair, what is an old fashioned? Simple syrup, Angus syrup bitters, um, maybe an orange orange twist or you know, espresso orange peel spirit. So a lot of spirits can work with that. I could see that being a universal. I don't know about like gin. Maybe, maybe, or vodka. <laughs> maybe not clear spirits, but with aged spirits, I think, yeah, I think it can work really well. Um, Baker drinks in the chat. By the way, I mentioned I was on a few streams lately. If y'all missed it, I was over on their channel. Thank you guys so much again for having me. Amazing Whiskey Tube channel. Whole different community. So um, it surprised me being a guest there. There's a whole world of Whiskey Tube that we don't see as our normal group. So go check that out. Maybe you'll find a new favorite Whiskey Tuber, and I won't see you guys ever again. Bye, goodbye. No, stick around because it's fun. Um, <laughs> that's that's my tagline. Stick around because it's fun. No, but it is. We we just did our monthly movie night for Patreon um, or last, um, where we watch a retro movie together on Discord in a watch party. That's for everyone five dollars and up on Patreon, which um, is like a five dollar movie ticket. Like you would pay five dollars a month to go, you know, see a vintage movie with your friends. That's how I think of it. So if you guys are curious about that, check out Patreon.com/slash Bourbon Bites. I'm sure one of the mods will drop a link here in the chat soon. Put it down there. There is a 30-day free trial to our, our $10 tier, which comes with a few extra things like our after-party hangout that takes place right after this live stream every Thursday night. So if you guys want to try it out for 30 days, see if it's if it's for you. If it's not, you know, money, not money back. It's, it's a free trial. So just make sure to cancel before it renews. But hopefully you'll have fun, and hopefully you'll join us um, at tonight's after-party or this upcoming movie night here soon. So... Now, there are several other tiers above and below that. Your support matters, you know, whatever level you feel comfortable doing. But um, I try to make it worth your while. So speaking of which, one of uh, my, actually my top tier patron actually, we hung out quite a lot. So if you want to be, I mean, now there's a tier above him. I have my bourbon daddy tier that, that has only been achieved once. I had a bourbon daddy once. Um, so if you want to be my top, 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 top tier patron, um, well, that's available for you if you're interested. All details on patreon.com. So uh, thank you, Donna, for dropping that info. Live from the patio. Hello, welcome. I think might be the first time seeing you here in the chat. Glad to have you. Thanks for tuning in. We got some really fun whiskey to do today. Thank you, Donnie, of course, for the like, subscribe, and hit that bell button to be notified every time I go live. So seems like we are all good to go with the reviews. Sounds like video, video issues have corrected themselves, seemingly. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have another sip of this, and then we're gonna get into our reviews. I'm very excited for all of these. Um, not, no, two of them are first impressions. One I've had before, because I'm impatient, and when I get a bottle delivered to me, I'm gonna open it and try it. Um, let's see, proof-wise, where are we going? All right, all right. Well, okay, so while I talk about these, I'm also going to be, um, Donnie says I'm tolerable. Okay, well, tolerable... Donnie, maybe refresh just to see if it fixes. I'm not, before I was seeing a little notification that my signal is bad. It's not showing up for a while, so let me know. But um, yeah, so as I go through I'm, the tastings, I'm going to talk about my experience at the 2024 New Orleans Bourbon Festival. If you missed it at the beginning, my first time going, I've never gone to a bourbon festival like this that last many days. Um, so talk a little bit about the things I love, the things I didn't quite love as much, and um, yeah, just talk about some of the things I learned throughout the experience. But first... I'm going to pour my first whiskey that I'm reviewing tonight. Um, this brand was not there, actually. I did not see any... Uh, any. Mm, okay, let me take a step back. Well, no, no. This label was not there. I'm talking about, of course, Old Forest. 
I, I say that because Woodford was there and um, Jack Daniels. But yeah, so Old Forester was not there as far as I'm aware. If they were, sorry, I missed it. Uh, but this is a new 10-year expression, 100 proof, 1924. Um, so it, it's a dedication to, in 1924, Osley Brown took barrels of whiskey with different mash bills to a warehouse on Howard Street in Louisville, Kentucky, and bottled them at, as Old Forester. This 10-year-old expression honors the 100th anniversary of this occasion. Now, I've heard some controversy. People say this isn't worth the price. If you know me, I'm not the hugest Old Forester fan. Um, some of their products I do like. Most of them don't quite fit my flavor profile that I'm looking for usually. Um, but I've been curious about this. I paid like probably 120 to 130. Again, it was at Bevmo, so it was a retail. It was a retail price. I just don't. I don't have my receipt for it, but. Um, I paid a fair price for it, so um, let's let's go ahead and pop the court for a fur of Old Forester 1924. Wow, that was really loud. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um, all right, so I like the I like the tax strip look they got going on. It's just kind of getting in the way, and I don't want to. I don't care how pretty it looks. It's hair a little bit. Someone's probably crying that that hasn't. Um, <laughs> oh, I see my signal's kind of crapping out again. But let me know if it's if it's tolerable, as Donnie said. Um, if not, I apologize. All right, let's pour a little bit of this. Oh, Donnie likes the 1924 best of the Whiskey Row series. Oh, that's nice to hear. Um, yeah, like I said, I they're hit or miss with me. I think I like 1910 before. Like, that was my favorite before. 1920, to me, just, I love High Proof, but for me, that one didn't quite fully do it for me. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to give this one a try. Is there anything else that I'm missing about this one? I, I know I said it was, like, a tribute to the, the first release as a 10-year age statement. Um, it's the same, it's um, rather than the traditional, oh, maybe this is it. It's a new mash bill. Something new about it. Um, it's a uh, mash bill of 79% corn, 11% rye, and 10% malted barley. So a lot more rye, or a lot less rye, actually. This is a high corn mash bill. Very interesting. Okay, maybe I'll like it a little bit better. Um, really curious to give it a try. Whoa, did my lighting, oh, that was weird. I like leaned over here. Oh, my light. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm still experimenting with my lights. I tried to make it New Orleans themed, but um, you can't really see the the yellow. But it's all it's all good. <laughs> I'm just here. I'm just here for a good time. But all right, so that's been poured. Um, but let, let's talk a little bit about the New Orleans Bourbon Fest. I'm I'm gonna share my uh, photos from the event. Um, talking through my weekend, I went down on Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday. Um, never been to New Orleans. Very very first time. But I've been looking forward to the food the culture, everything for so, so long. So I knew I had to make it down there. Um, so let me see where, where to start. I mean, honestly, the first thing that we checked into our hotel um, and then, of course, wanted to meet up with, like I said, one of, one of my top tier patron, Todd Cooper. You guys, some of you know him. Um, really great guy. He actually went to this. He's been to this event before back in 2022, I think. Um, so he was back again this year. So we met up at a bar called Snug, Snug something. Gosh, now I don't remember the name. I just have photos. So let me, let me just, let me just do a little slideshow. Let's see if this will work. All right. Let's see. I want to make sure I'm still on the screen. Okay. I'm still there. Okay. How do, can I change this? Ooh, 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 ooh. Come on. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. All right. So yeah, this is us. Um, we are meeting up at the Snug something in new orleans uh it's a, it was a jazz bar um uh so great to see him i hadn't seen him since back in 2018 we actually um we met at chad and sarah's from it's bourbon night um they had a meet up in 20 news i didn't know him he didn't know me but now we are so great friends so um, i actually met don nishida fun fact at that same meetup uh but yeah so this is uh, us hanging out having a drink let's see also there's no embarrassing photos that pop up here of me then um that was wednesday like i said we walked around bourbon street just kind of hung out for a bit um didn't really do too much really i mean it was a pretty chill day just a travel day um and then on thursday our friends chad and sarah snug harbor thank you doug thank you doug snug is yeah <laughs> so snug harbor that's correct yeah so there was a jazz show there we didn't actually quite um didn't quite make it to the show but it was still a really good time so we went there. Um, that was Thursday, Wednesday night. But then Thursday, Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night had their meetup at Barrel Proof, which was that next. This is this is us just hanging out at the bar. And 
out with his friends, uh, listen to some jazz on the street. Let me hear that. But always good New Orleans vibes. Um, and then, yeah, had dinner with them. Had, this Juicifer beer, is a, it's a local hazy IPA. I'd never had it before. Um, I like it a lot. They're actually the same company. Um, does a double IPA that I actually like a bit better. I forget the name of it, but um, yeah, I had a great time. I had a delicious fish. I had the theme of the food here was seafood. So <laughs> um, yeah, did a little bit of sightseeing a bit that day. And then um, of course there's a Caesars casino there or it used to be Harris, but they're calling it Caesars now. Did a bit of gambling, had some gumbo, had some fried oysters, had a barbecue shrimp from a place called Mr. B's, which is incredible. One of the highest recommended places that I can recommend to you from there. Delicious, great service. Some of the best service I've had. Really incredible. They they put bibs on you. <laughs> Make sure you're prepared. And then, of course, we had to go to the famous Patty O'Brien's uh, to get some hurricanes. I'd never had a hurricane before. Scratch that. I had a um, premix hurricane, and it basically is the same premix they use there. So, um, yeah, so that was it. Then we went to, on Thursday, we went to Chad and Sarah's meetup um, at Barrel Proof. That's where I met Doug, I think, for the first time. Um, so great hanging with them. It's very dark, very dark in these videos. I don't know why. I guess it was kind of dark there. Uh, but yeah, so that kicked off the start. This was opening night of the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. We had a little VIP reception here. Um, and then that brings us to the New Orleans Bourbons Festival. So let's take a pause here. Let's go back to this old Forester that we um, poured ourselves a moment ago. Um, like I said, I didn't see them at the festival, but I um, wanted to give a first impression. 1924, about $120-ish, $130. <laughs> Adam says those bibs are essential for New Orleans barbecue shrimp. Mashville is like early times bottle and bond, says Donnie. I think someone else said that too. Um, Adam said it's basically early times barrels that were laid down before the sale and not included in the early times brand sale. Interesting, okay. Good to know. Well, I will say the nose of this. Not quite what I expect from Old Forester. I think maybe it is leaning into that different flavor profile. Again, like, it is a different mash bill, more corn, less rye. None of the like weird banana notes that I sometimes get on Old Forester. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice nose. I mean, you can tell it's very corn forward. It's almost got that like, kind of dusty corn kind of note. Um, but for a 10 year old, I'm surprised that note's there. Usually with a 10 year old, those notes have kind of mellowed out a bit, and they're more of the, the oaky, more caramel sweet notes. Yeah, but nose, I mean, it's definitely different than what I'm used to, but let's go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers, y'all, and thanks for watching. It's so good to see you. I, I see it's still dropping, and I apologize. If it's really, really bad, I'll, I'll stop my router and restart it. If it's, like, tolerable, if, okay, tolerable is a strong word. If I look like I'm an 8-bit an 8-bit pixel on the screen, then maybe I'll restart. But if I look like, I don't know. Let me try one more thing. I, it dropped again. So let me try one last thing. Let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Trying one last thing. All right. Give me one second. It should still stay connected. It's going to be real quick. Here we go. All right, maybe, maybe we're reconnecting. Give it a moment. Can you hear me? I'm a little blurry, but potentially better. Potentially. We'll see. <laughs> All right, it's just stuttering. Yeah, but I hate that. I don't want to, you guys have a bad experience, especially those of you watching live. I know usually with the replay, it fixes it, but um, if you're watching live, I don't want you guys to miss out. So I want to make sure it's all good before we go in for it. The taste. That's the last thing I'm trying. I'm, I'm going to stop tinkering with things. Um, if this if this doesn't improve things, then we'll just roll with it for the rest of the stream, and I'll make sure it's fixed before next week's stream. Donnie, I might call on you at some point to like help me out. <laughs> All right. Cheers, y'all. Let's try the Old Forester 1924. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, 
I like it a lot. And I see that Adam says that him and Donnie are the only ones in their local group that, that really enjoy it. I'm with you guys. I really like this. This is actually great. I, I, it's one of my favorite Old Forester products. Um, the problem is, I think, the price. I think that's what a lot of people are complaining about, right? Like, it's it's not that it's a bad whiskey. I actually prefer this over the 1920, maybe even the 1910. I'd, love, I'd have to do a comparison. I like this palette. I like that, that extra corn forward note. I think it actually benefits it. Thank you, Donnie. I tried. The yellow isn't showing up very well because I have this bright neon sign above it, but <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, oh, Baker Drinks likes it a lot. Glad to hear that you guys like it too. Um, yeah, I I think it's good. It, is it overpriced? Yeah, I think it is. Hopefully it'll come down once the hype kind of goes down a bit, but that's solid. That is really good. Yeah, Donnie says my issue with it. Yeah. First review of the day. I'm feeling pretty confident. So we got two more whiskeys to review here, but I'm going to go back to my New Orleans Bourbon Festival story, tell you a little bit more about my experience. So let's let's see if this comes back up. I wish I could resize myself. Like, I'm so little. <laughs> Can I, like, full screen this? Will that help? I don't know if it would let me full screen it. I can, like, maximize it. That's not going to help, is it? No. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. So this... It's day one of the tasting, so let, let's let's go back. Let's, let's 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 talk real talk. So my schedule, um, let me not have that visible right now because I'm gonna <laughs> have a lot of like info here that probably shouldn't be on the screen. All right, so my schedule for the the two days of the tasting, basically Friday and Saturday were the main days of the festival. I had a full schedule of some. Very first one I signed up for on Thursday was smoke wagon and there were a lot of other good options too i know um buzzards roosted one as well um but i wanted to meet the folks from smoke wagon because never met them um and they're based in las vegas which i go to very very frequently so went there 10 a.m by the way 10 a.m in new orleans after a night on bourbon street not always the the, the best thing to do but i i did it i did it powered through um, and, uh, yeah, so we showed up, got there, sat around a little bit, sat around a little bit more. Fortunately, we were told that the smoke, the folks, there had been a miscommunication and the folks from smoke wagon had not appeared for that seminar. So, uh, the, the founder of the event actually came out and apologized. And I appreciate, you know, the transparency and willingness to do that and take ownership so that it was his fault, but. He did come out and tell us, you know, that's that's what happened. However, to make up for it, they decided that, you know what, we got some pretty exclusive uh, barrels here that we're, we're selling, you know, as available to like single barrel picks for the festival. So he's like, let's bring them all out and let you guys um, walk around the room and, and, and well, they walked around the room and poured them for us. So it's 10 a.m., right? Like we had not had what we had. What do we have? We had coffee. We didn't even have like a pastry or anything. 10 a.m., um, several bottles flying towards us, including these that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show photos of. Um, what a way to make up for it, because <laughs> they were coming around, giving us some things that I had never even heard of. Like, this is one of them backyard straight bourbon whiskey. Um, this is a New Orleans brand. Now, as far as I'm aware, it is a sourced um, whiskey. It's 10 years old, um, but this was a cast strength release. This is actually the first um, yeah, cast strength, 10 year old whiskey, um, bourbon actually. Um, so I was off to a good start. Um, there was at least, at least eight pours at 10 AM. And one of them was this bottle, which spoiler alert was one of the bottles I bought. I only bought two bottles this entire festival. This is one of them. Now, I'm not going to speak too much on dark arts. It's actually my first time hearing of the brand. I had never tried their stuff before, but I really, really enjoyed them so much so that they're going to be on my stream in about two ish weeks. I think it's either two weeks from now or three weeks from now. They're actually sending me their full flight of samples. Their, their creator is going to join me and uh, we're going to have a full dark art stream. So again, I don't want to spoil it by opening this and reviewing it today, but just keep an eye out. This is a brand to look out for. It was one of my favorites of the festival. Not just this expression, but all of their stuff. This 
seven year. Um, it, now I think it is an Indiana. Yeah. Seven year Indiana, uh, whiskey, bourbon whiskey finished in white port wine cast. Now it's a cast strength coming in at. Okay. That looked like a thousand, <laughs> thousand, no, 111.8 proof. So yeah, this is, this is a standout for sure, but we're going to get to that later. So yeah, that was the, um, actually the people that come to save the day after they passed around all these bottles, you can kind of see the bottles lined up here. That's the, um, dark arts and then the backyard. There's a couple still awesome expressions, um, and more, but of course, who other than Bernie lovers and, um, shoot, I, I forget his name, the master distiller of heaven Hill. Uh, what's his name? Shoot. Connor O'Driscoll. Okay. There we go. Connor O'Driscoll, um, came up and, uh, Tasted us through some Heaven Hill products. Now, they were just, of course, nothing too crazy. It was larceny. It was on, but still, again, we're talking eight pours at 10 a.m. So um, it was a pretty incredible start to the festival. Uh, so <laughs> we were feeling good. We were feeling good. Now, the next the next one we went to was actually, so pull up my schedule so I can make sure I can follow along. Um, was Bourbon Through Bluegrass. Now, this was, of course, led by Bernie Lovers. Again, we saw him yet again. <laughs> I said he saved the day, and then he came back. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Now, this one, I think... How did I get four? Oh, wait. oh yeah, okay. I'm, just get, I'm getting ahead of myself. So that was fun. Um, the next tasting was a Four Roses tasting with Brent Elliott. Had never met the guy. He was great. Um, we tried, as you can see, we tasted through the standard one, the small batch, single barrel, and small batch collect, select. Those of you that know me, small batch select is my favorite. Four Roses expression, so still my favorite, <laughs> even out of all of these. Um, nothing crazy, no special pours necessarily, but um, still a great time getting to getting to know Brent. Um, yeah, so they, they actually, <laughs> Four Roses, okay. So I told you that we got pretty drunk at... Um, Got pretty drunk at that first tasting, right? Well, Four Roses, not only did they give us those four pours, they paired a cocktail with every single pour. So we had four cocktails, four pours. Um, so uh, by noon, I had had at least 16 different whiskeys slash cocktails. Now, thankfully, this is at our hotel, so I didn't have to travel far. But I'm just letting, I'm setting the stage for what's to come with the rest part, the later part of the story. Stick around. I'm trying to keep up with the, the chat, so I apologize if I miss you stuff. Um, Donnie says, the name seems like a copy of the Brucolati Dark Art. Oh, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, Tony says, pick waiting for me at Benny's. Anyone available to give me a ride? And Tony says, Brent can pick a mean barrel. Yeah, no, he was great. It was, it was great getting to know him and, and, and learn a little more about the brand I wasn't super familiar with. But... Um, yeah, so that was that. I was feeling real good at that point. We had a little lunch break. Now for lunch, lunch was provided. And by lunch being provided, I mean there were just like finger sandwiches. Like that's it. A couple of like ham sandwich and egg salad sandwich. And by sandwich, I mean like literally just like a, a slice of a sandwich. Like not even a half, not a quarter, a slice. Now you could get as many as you wanted, sure. But um, you were in a long line of other people. You didn't want to be that guy that got too many things. So... uh yeah, <laughs> so um, we had a light, a very light lunch after 16 different pours slash cocktails. Um, but then it, we, it was not the end of the event because then we had to go meet up with our good friends again, Chad and Sarah, a blind flight. So they basically just poured four, four bottles, didn't give us any info on them whatsoever. Um, but so as you can see the bottles there, that was after the reveal. It was Mellow Corn, Makers 101, Four Roses Single Barrel, and Still Austin Caster. Now, the funny thing is um, everyone guessed Mellow Corn, and a lot of us were in that session with Bernie Lovers earlier who poured Mellow Corn. So it was fresh on our palate. Um, I think everyone – I felt kind of bad because, like, I feel like they, they were – Chad and Sarah were planning to trick folks with that. But, um, yeah, <laughs> we all guessed it was Mellow Corn. Um, actually, the Still Austin surprised a lot of folks. I didn't – actually, I didn't – I would have never known – and that's the one thing I said during this. I was like, you know, I actually tried st this cast with salsa earlier and didn't love it, but blind, it was my favorite. So that's the beauty of a blind flight. And, 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 and Chad and Sarah are, are pros at it. So, yeah, of course, me and them. Of course, we've known them for several years. So always good to see them. Um, yeah. So next up, <laughs> it, was, it was still going. 
time is it at this point on the um the agenda? That was at 2 p.m. This is at 3.15. This is a tasting with Bardstown Bourbon Company. Uh so yeah, they gave us four different pours. They gave us different items to pair with the pours. So the first one was the, the Origin series. Uh it was a six year of their own bourbon. They paired it with some pop rocks. Next was the Origin series bottled in bond, uh, also a six year. I had never had this one before. They paired that with a dried apricot, I think it was. The Origin Series Rye Single Barrel, which was a four, does this say six? Maybe it's a six year rye. Six year of their own rye paired with a tea bag. <laughs> and that was for smelling, not, not eating. Um, and then lastly, it was the New Discovery Series. I think it's number, my camera's not that good. Is that 11? Discovery Series 11. Um, they paired it with a Jolly Rancher. So that one's 73% Kentucky 13 year, probably Barton. 21% Kentucky 10 year. And Bardstown Bourbon Company. So really cool, um, really cool pairing. Never done a Pop Rocks whiskey pairing. So it was it was definitely a challenge, but I honestly appreciated it a lot. So uh <laughs> so your palate wasn't completely right after 64. Honestly, not at that point. It was not. <laughs> Donnie, we'll get to that. Brad said he wishes he had a drink. Well, Brad, I mean, unless there's a reason you're not drinking, pour a drink, join us. <laughs> well done, Dragon Gyoza. I can see that. All right. Yeah, no, it was not. Um, oh, not Barton, most likely Beam. For the older one, the 13-year the one? Okay. Maybe. Maybe the 21-year. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Honestly, I'll be honest. None of these were especially memorable for me. I'm not, I've not traditionally been the biggest old uh, Barstone Bourbon Company fan, but it, it was a fun pairing. I loved doing the different pairings. The Jolly Rancher actually paired best. But um, yeah, so that was that. Then we went to the. Oh, let's go and zoom in. Hold on. Yeah, so these are the bottles that we tried. So this is the. Um, uh, I'm trying to see which one that one says. I can't read it. Oh, that's the rye. So it's a uh, rye whiskey finished in a toasted sherry wood and oak barrel. So that was a six year rye. It was the Origin series and the Discovery series. So. Yeah, pretty cool lineup. Again, not the old uh, Barstow Bourbon Company has not always been my favorite, but it was always cool to try new stuff on them. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so speaking of Cliffy, okay. So after all that, right? We we had done that. We, we actually had the, I don't have any photos from the last one. I did a still awesome tasting, and it was my absolute favorite of the seminars. It was a oh god, it was so fun. I wish I had a video of it. Dang. Okay. Still awesome. Let me just let me just talk about it. Still awesome. I love Still Austin, especially Chris Seals, their master distiller. Really great guy. We, we hung out with him quite a bit during this festival. Um, he had a very fun seminar where he gave us a blend. So he, he basically gave us four or five bottles. I'm like, I'm talking like three, seven, five, pretty size, good sized bottles full of whiskey. Then he gave us a bottle filled with a blend. And he said, whoever can get closest to this blend wins now i don't know if there was a prize or not. i don't actually remember but what we had to do is we had to blend those four different whiskeys to get something close flavor wise um to his blend so it was so much fun i was there with todd um i forgot who all was there <laughs> justin was there obviously but it, we had a, we had a pretty good team so uh we were blended and then we eventually you know came up with our blend that we we're pretty co positive about that like we we're like this is the closest we think we can get this to and we weren't that far off. I think we had two swapped that 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 sh that should have our percentages. Like everything was pretty on point. So I was pretty proud of myself. I felt really confident. It's actually, so funny enough, uh, Chris uh, gave me one of the bottles. I don't know if it was like part of the blend or whatever. He's like, you can take this if you want. So like, it's set in my hotel room. It's like cast strength straight from the barrel, still lost in. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. It was it was really crazy. So that was definitely my favorite um, seminar of of the festival. But um, this is where things go a little downhill. So, <laughs> um, so I was told that there was going to be food at the um, grand tasting, which we got early access to because we had VIP tickets. Um, and th there apparently was. Do I remember there being food at that that first night of the of the tasting? I do not. I do not. So. Um, <laughs> All I had eaten that day was the uh, the the finger sandwiches, and I have had 
25 plus fours throughout the day. I line up, I'm hanging with Todd, we're having a great time. Um, as you can see in that photo that I just put up there, um, yeah, we're, we're in line, really, really cool chair. Now, the wind was blowing, don't touch me too much, we're waiting in line to go in for the grand tasting. So we went in, um, and that's, that's the last photo I have of Friday night. <laughs> I remember going in. I remember picking up my glass. They gave us a little wee lens for the festival. I remember going straight to the uh, Sarah. No, no, the, yeah, Sarah was in there. Um, I remember going to the Heaven Hill booth because you know you always try to go when, when you're going into the very beginning. You want to get all the the special pours that people bring. They had the twenty year mellow corn, um, so I had a chance to try that. That was fun. It it was good. I didn't dislike it. It wasn't my favorite. Um, next up, I went over to this trail. It actually was, um, the, the girl that Perry's had on the channel. I think her name's Haley. Um, she's been on there several times, but I, I recognized her from Perry's streams and I went up to her and I talked to her. Um, uh, I told her that, you know, I recognize her from Perry's streams. She's like, oh, I love Perry. I don't know how many of those I tasted at the Wilderness Trail booth. We talked for quite a bit. Um, and remind you, this is a festival with like 30 different whiskey vendors, 10 plus food vendors. I don't remember anything past Wilderness Trail. <laughs> this is the first night. So Cliffy, Cliffy after, you know, finger sandwiches and over 25 pours did not make it to the grand tasting. He, he got, he got his mellow corn cast strength, the 20 year, and he got his Wilderness Trail. <laughs> that was it. That's all I remember. I don't, that's why I literally asked Todd the next day. I'm like, was there food there? And he's like, um, there were like like at least 10, 10 food vendors. So um, yes, yes, Cliffy did not survive the first night of the Grand Tasting of the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. But you know what? That's why I paid for... Um... Oh, no, I said Perry. Sorry, it, it was who Perry had on the channel. I think her name was Haley, if I remember correctly. Um, she's the Wilderness Trail brand rep. I think they'd known each other for a while. But yeah, so... Um... Yeah, so that was my first night. Cliffy did not make it through his first night of the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. So <laughs> that's that. Now, before we go into night two, I'm going to go ahead and review my next whiskey of the night. I know I'm getting low on time, but it's okay. We're almost done. So my next one is actually um, a, a new one for me from Heaven Hill. So a few months back, I reviewed the... Um, did I read? Okay, now I'm very confused. I grabbed the wrong bottle. Hold on, hold on. Have I reviewed this already? Probably. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see if I've already reviewed this. I think, you know, so last year they sent me a um, sample of the Bernheim A223. That's it. Okay. So I reviewed that. So there was apparently a B batch last year. I didn't get it. Uh, oh, <laughs> lying. Just kidding. Other way around. Last year, I got the B923 Bernheim. That was my very first Bernheim bar barrel proof I got sent. Did not get the A batch last year. This year, they sent me the A batch of 24. So this is Bernheim A224. 125.2 proof, 62.6% ABV. Clifton thought I was serious. Why do I think you were serious? Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you guys are joking about something that I missed. Uh, but yeah, so this is the Bernheim Straight Wheat Whiskey. Now, the press release says this one is 51% um, wheat, 37% corn, and 12% malted barley. Same as the standard Bernheim. Uh, this barrel proof release is about, I believe it's seven years old. Yeah. Oh, wait, so hold on. Seven to nine years old. So the lowest age in this blend is seven. The oldest is nine. So again, last year's... The B batch last year thought was okay. Was not, you know, a personal favorite of mine. It didn't make my top 10 of the year. But I'm excited to give it another try with the A224. Let's give it a nose. Hmm. I do like this. Well, the nose. Donnie says he just picked this up this week. Um, A224. Really enjoyed it. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I just remember last year, it, I just didn't quite... Didn't quite do it for me, but I'm excited to give it another try. I mean, that's a classic Heaven Hill nose. It's, it's soft, which I think is coming from the wheat. It's still 50, it's still 37% corn, but there's none of that spice that you typically um, would get from a 
Heaven Hill product. Yeah, but it's, it, it smells like it's in the same family as like a Larceny. I actually wanted to do a comparison between this and the latest Larceny, but in the panicked moment of not making a Sazerac, I did not grab the Larceny. So we just have this today. By the way, if you guys, uh, thank you all for sticking around. Uh, we got 10 minutes left, but I seriously appreciate you all tuning in live or watching the replay. It does mean a lot. I'm here every Thursday. Make sure to subscribe. All right. Anyways, love the nose. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers. Oh, that's kind of oddly minty. I wasn't expecting a bit of a mint note. Mint, I usually associate with a rye. It's not like that spicy mint. I mean, it's spicy because of the proof, right? But it's not, that's surprising I on a wheat whiskey. Donnie, let me know what um, notes you got on this. I'm curious because I know you and I, I think we said it before, we have similar palettes. We like similar things, especially when it comes to Old Forester, like the 1924. <clears throat> to me, it, it's got a bit of a minty character to it, which is surprising. I like it. Love you too, Fred. It's got a sweeter, darker undertone, almost like a, like a French vanilla, not quite like a sweet, like artificial vanilla or like vanilla extract. It's more of like a darker... I don't I mean to be fair, I don't actually know. This is like a this is an Emily question. I don't know if she's here tonight, but she's she's amazing with, with tasting those. But it's like a to me, it's like a darker, richer vanilla. Which for some reason I associate with French vanilla. I don't know if that's true. But it's that and a mint. Like I don't know if a vanilla mint is like a thing. Peppermint's kind of, no pepper I, I think of a peppermint candy, right? Like it has like that um I don't know, it's got like a but that's good. Either, anyways, ignore my tasting notes. That's good. That's actually a contender for one of my top whiskeys of the year. Wow. And this is what I thought when I, and this is one that I tried before. I like this a lot. It surprises me. It's, is Bernheim getting to the point? You remember when Larceny Barrel Proof first came out? We were like, eh, miss, miss, miss. And then 2022 came around. Oh, better, better, better. 23. Ooh, I like this. I like this. I think that's what's happening with Bernheim. I think we're finally getting to the, oh, like the, oh, this is surprisingly good. I like this. This is, this is, a224 Burnheim cast strength. Give it a try. Really complex. I mean, I like that they, they stuck with 51% wheat, so it's not like 100% wheat. Got a lot of flavor coming through there. Man, that's that's a great pour. Love this. Uh, Donnie says it was a pleasantly bready note. Mallard note. Oh, what is mallard? Sorry, when I see mallard, I think duck. <laughs> yeah, you get a duck note. Um, I get where the duck is coming from, the mallard note I was picking up on. Yeah, I don't know what a mallard is, but hopefully, maybe not duck. I mean, nothing wrong with eating duck. I don't prefer duck, but um, I don't think you're talking about duck. Um, Fred says he liked the first um, Bernheim Castor. Now, Fred, is that the one that um, was released before they put the batch numbers on it? Um, because I've heard good things about that one, but the the... B, I didn't have the first one. I had the B5, B923 last year. This is the A223. It's throwing me off because the numbering is different than the Larceny and the Logic Crag. Um, honestly, it took me a minute. When I saw BCS, actually, I read that as Barrel Craft Spirits. <laughs> I was confused for half a second, but it also could be Bourbon County Style. But I put the connection together. Mayard, the browning when cooking. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't cook. <laughs> But um, the A123, gotcha, okay. Oh, Emily is here. Hello, Emily. Sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't realize that, I didn't acknowledge that you were here. Good to see you. French vanilla means egg custard. Vanilla tasting would be interesting. Oh, yeah. Because I know that bourbon vanilla is a type of vanilla. Um, and there's also Madagascar. There's a, there's a lot of vanillas. I'm definitely not a vanilla expert. Um, Sugar Katie says vanilla itself is an extremely simple flavor. It's only one chemical. Gotcha. And it's when you get to the different different styles of it that kind of makes it more complex. That's really interesting. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll do a vanilla tasting. I don't know how I can go about that, but um, if y'all have ideas, let me know. <laughs> I like that a lot. All right. So let's get into night two, the final day of the, the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Let's go to our... All right, let, let me pull up my schedule because, again, that was a rough one. I had actually signed up um, 
early 10 a.m. tasting again the next day with Peerless, which, you know, I love Peerless. I love the folks at Peerless. I love the distillery tour. But 10 a.m., after that night, yeah, I woke I, I set my alarm to an appropriate time. I woke up. I'm like, oh, God, I feel awful. Let me just, like, go back to sleep and wait back up at, like, 9.15. The tasting was at 10. I was like, let me wake up at 9.15, see how I feel. I woke up, felt a little bit better, but not, like, willing to get up and get ready and go to the tasting. So I just basically made the call. I'm going to skip this one. So I heard it was great. Todd said it was great. They had some amazing. They gave them toasted barrels, some barrel proof. I don't. I don't think I could handle it. Like I don't know if it's just. It's not that it, it would like make me get sick or anything. It's just when I have a night of like heavy drinking like that, I get really bad acid reflux. So uh, I'll get to that story next with the, with the next few pours we had. So let me pull up my photos again. So the next one was a tasting again with Connor O'Driscoll from Heaven Hill. Seeing him. Um, of course, the first time was unplanned. The second time, he was just in the audience for um, Bernie's uh, a session. But yeah, so he did a Heaven Hill tasting, and man, oh man, was this was this great! So we started with the Heaven Hill bottle and bond, which you know, it's funny. I actually brought a bottle of this as my room bottle. I don't know if you guys, when you guys travel, but do you guys have a bottle in your room just in case you want to pregame before going out? We do. This was actually the exact bottle that we brought to our room. Um, so we started with that one. I had it in my glass. My acid just, I struggled. I'm like, oh my God. And it's a hundred proof, right? So I'm like, oh God, what have I done to myself? How, how am I going to get through today? But I took baby sips. You know, I followed it. I chased it with some water. Um, um, I, I got through it. I will say, you know, that kind of, I, I set my palate up with that. Thankfully I did because the next one was probably the favorite thing I tasted at the festival. Now I did say that the, the dark art was the biggest surprise. I really loved it. Fours alone. That William Heaven Hill, this was the 15, or sorry, let me zoom in. 15 year Kentucky straight bourbon at 54.5%, 109 proof, um, distillery exclusive. Amazing. This was, I mean, this is heaven in a bottle, dare I say it. But honestly, even though I suffered through the the burn, the burn of this one, um, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Because that I mean, it's like everything I want, you know, high proof, 15 year old Heaven Hill. I mean, one of the best, one of the best whiskeys I've ever tasted. And honestly, like I would, if I would, I don't know what year this came out. I don't know if it's an older release or not, but um, the things I would do for that bottle. <laughs> and then lastly, the last thing we tried was actually the, uh, oh, you know, what's funny? The Heaven Hill Heritage Collection. Is this that, is this that um, line that Perry was talking about on his stream? The, um, where all the different distilleries come out with like an exclusive bottling. Cause I feel like, literally two hours ago i've never had anything from that collection and then i'm looking at a photo of of the 17 year heaven hill if that's is that from that same thing where all the distillers released a heritage collection or, or am i thinking of something else those of you who were on perry stream he mentioned this so maybe it was the same thing but apparently i have had it <laughs> actually oh shit you know what someone said that the heaven hill was it todd that said the heaven hill one no that was sorry that was um not todd that was uh Brian Brennicky. Okay. Okay. So may, maybe this is that bottle. I don't know. The chat's a little delayed, so I don't actually know. But the 17 year Heaven Hill, it was at Cast Strength. Oh, Bardstown Collection. Thank you, Adam. Okay. I was getting a little confused. Thank you for the clarification. Tony said the things I would do to that bottle. <laughs> I mean, you know what? You, you do what you want to the bottle. <laughs> but yeah. So the 17 year Heaven Hill Heritage Collection, also great. It was cast strength. We're talking like 60 plus percent ABV. Cliffy, after a night of drinking, could not handle it. I even added like quite a bit of water. It just cast strength whiskey that early for me after a night of drinking did not hit the right place. It tasted fabulous. The flavor profile was fantastic. But actually, in that moment, I preferred the William Heaven Hill. It was just, it was perfect. The proof was perfect. The age, I would, I would pick that bottle over that. Actually, I asked her and I asked um, my husband, I asked uh, Todd and his friend. We all said the William Heaven Hill was our favorite. So I'm not crazy. But yeah, so that was actually um, probably the best exclusive pour I had during the event. Um, this was the next one. Um, uh, it's uh, my first time really getting to know the brand of. Uh, 
limestone branch. So I've had Yellowstone. I've had Yellowstone LE, but we did a tasting of limestone branch going through their rye, their bourbon, their different cask finishes. And honestly, it really impressed me. I, I think I liked the um the rye was like kind of just kind of okay. They had a special rye and a special bottle. I forgot what it was called. Um I really like the, the Tokai cask finish. I like that one a lot. This was 5-4, so Cliffy from the previous day was like, oh, no, here we go. Here we go. Let's, let's calm down. Uh, so this was five pours. I got through them all. <laughs> it was a struggle, but I got through them all. Um, yeah, and it was so great. It was so great hearing their story and getting to meet them. Um, one of my favorite tastings. So I said that about everything, right? Next up, we went to the Sazerac house, which, um, as, you, as I mentioned, I am t- drinking a Sazerac here. Uh, yeah, I had, I had a great time. It was just a, it's a free tour. Um, had never been. Yeah, it was really cool. But too late. Where are we? We are on Saturday night, the last night of the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Um, and I still have one more whiskey to review. So right on time, Barry. I'm a little, I'm, I'm running a little over. I promise guys I'll wrap up in the next 10, 15 minutes. Appreciate y'all sticking around. So yeah, we did the Sazerac cast. It was a free tasting of different, three different cocktails. Had never been. It was really cool to talk about, to talk about these bitters that we were drinking earlier. And, um, yeah, so not to skim through that, but we're, I'm realizing I'm behind. So there was one last tasting I wanted to go to, which was, of course, the infamous Freddie Johnson from Buffalo Trace. He actually hosted a Buffalo Trace tasting that um, the expressions were pretty basic. It was, you know, Buffalo Trace, E.H. Taylor's Small Batch, and um, Eagle Rare, as well as their White Dog. But my favorite part of him was, one, his incredible storytelling capabilities. Um, Two, just his methods of like tasting things different ways. He had a thing where you put like the water in your mouth first, and then you put a little bit of whiskey in. I had never tried that before, and it was really cool. It actually, helped a lot with my acid reflux. I will tell you that. Uh, but yeah, no, it was absolutely a treat meeting him. And really, that was the last session I went to for the whole event. Then um, we went to dinner. Um, what did I do? I forgot what I did for dinner. I promise I remembered at the moment. But um, I think we did oysters. I think we did um, charcoal oysters from. We went to uh, there's two places we went to. One we actually preferred. Now I'm gonna pull up my Google Maps to find out which one we went to that we really liked. Uh, the one that we thought was kind of just mediocre was one of the most famous ones for it for their their char grilled char broiled oysters. But the one that was actually our favorite. Okay, let me see. I got my map here. Yeah, the one that was kind of just okay. Shoot, I'm trying to find it now. It's down by the riverfront near the Hilton. Gosh, I'm not even thinking of it right now. But anyways, it, Drago's. Drago's is the one that we tried that wasn't that great. However, we went to another place the next day to try theirs. Um, and that was... I say favorites, guys, I promise. That was Felix's Restaurant. And we loved Felix's charbroiled, charbroiled oysters. One of the favorite things we ate on the whole trip. It was really, really great. So I recommend that over the um, Dragos, personally. Uh, yeah, so it was great. Swan said he's been here. Okay. I don't know if we're talking about Dragos or New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Oh, no, you've been here in the chat. You have been here. I know. I said hello to you earlier. But yeah. Anyways, great time getting to, to meet Freddie and go through his tasting. Those are the oysters that I was talking about at Dragos. They were good, but the ones at Felix's were better. Um, yeah, food pictures. I take a lot of food pictures. Anyways, last night of the tasting. As you can tell, there's a lot of whiskey there. A lot of whiskey. And Cliffy did not make an appearance, even though it looks like it. Again, it was, I was outside. It was a long day. It was windy. It was windy the, la- the last couple of days we were there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I remember the last night's tasting, which is incredible because the first night I don't remember anything. I had incredible food. I had incredible whiskeys. The craziest whiskey I had at that thing um, was the Crown Royal, the 23-year-old apple flavored whiskey. The one that like, I'm like, what is this? There's the Crown Royal Regal Apple that was like 23 years old or something. Had to try it. It was good. It, it was it was like a better version of the regular Crown Royal Apple. Would I pay the two to $300 for it? Absolutely not. Um, but we had a great time. I tried a lot of great things. I made a lot of great connections. I actually picked up business 
So look forward to some new guests on the channel in the next few months. I'm really, really excited to reach out to these brands. Hopefully you guys are excited to see um, some of these really cool brands come up with new innovative products uh, because I loved every minute of it. I would go back for sure. Maybe not next year, maybe take another year off, but um, I definitely feel like I want to go back to New Orleans sometime uh, soon. I'd love to go back and just try the more food. Um, by the way, we did a swamp boat tour the next day. If you follow my Instagram, you can sell some of those photos. But yeah, we had an excellent time, a fantastic first trip to New Orleans. Would absolutely go back. I think I don't want to go to the Bourbon Festival. I don't think it's something I would go to yearly necessarily, but maybe every two or three years, I would absolutely, absolutely go back. So had a blast. Really great food, great drinks, great company. Loved it. Oh, the golden apple. Yes. Yeah. Bigger drink said, do you plan to go again someday? Yeah. Like I said, I don't think it's something I would do every year, but it's something that maybe every couple of years, I would love to go to like a Kentucky bourbon festival. Um, Maybe Tennessee. I don't know. Tennessee does a lot of whiskey festivals. LA does them, but they're pretty small scale and they're usually just one night. So I um, would absolutely love to do another bourbon festival like this again soon. Had a fantastic time. But before I go, I do have one more whiskey to review. Richie Z, hello. I Sorry, I saw you in the chat, but I was on a tangent. <laughs> Lastly, it was a festival exclusive single barrel cast strength from Still Austin. This was picked exclusively for this New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Let me see if it'll focus. On. There's a face there. How are you struggling? How are you struggling? There's literally a face. There we go. Yes. Yeah, so this was a grain to glass exclusive for New Orleans Bourbon Festival. It's a straight bourbon whiskey coming in at 116 proof. Um, the barrel number is 2018-1109. So about uh, almost a six-year-old, I imagine a six-year-old straight bourbon whiskey. I love Still Austin. Again, I, I raved about them earlier, but let's try this. I actually did not get a chance to try this at the festival, but it's one of the two bottles that I bought at it. So let's give it a try. I hope it's good. <laughs> Like I said, I did it earlier in the night and I didn't love it, but then I tried it at Ch Chad and Sarah's and loved it. So let's see how this single barrel, I've not tried any other single barrels before, so I'm excited. I mean, technically, I guess I have when I did that blending experiment with Chris, but um, yeah, so <laughs> basically, but never had an official single barrel before. Harry says he has that shirt. Which shirt? Still Austin? My shirt? Okay, maybe. I have no idea where I got this. I got off work like like two hours before my stream. Um, I had my performance review today, so I'm gonna look a little nice. No, I say I look a little nice. I guess the button up, but whatever, it's fine. Um, Fred says, "I bet that's really good." I have the Bourbon Fest still Austin pick from 2022, and it's delicious. Oh, really? That's all. Awesome. You still have that? I'd love to swap samples. I'd love to have you try this one and compare the one I'm wearing. Okay. Oh, the one I was wearing. Oh, in the photo, I don't even know what I was wearing. Was it a uh, it's Bourbon Night shirt? Oh, no, it's just a button-up. <laughs> okay. Good to know. We have the similar sense of style here. <laughs> but, yeah, let's. it smells great on the nose. I mean, still Austin is probably my favorite Texas distillery. I know there's some other ones doing some really incredible experimental stuff. But still Austin just as a, as a solid straight bourbon whiskey, they're my favorite. So let's go ahead and try this, the one you are wearing. Okay. Oh, thank you for clarifying, Perry. We're not gonna go, we've already been on this tangent long enough. Let's move on. Let's move on, Perry. <laughs> All right. Let's try the Still Austin single barrel store pick. Not store pick. Festival pick. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, man. I am so this. Oh, my gosh. It was only like $60. Man, that is probably, dare I say, the best Still Austin I've ever had. Like I said, I've never had their single barrels before, but I've had their cast strength. And this, man, this this blows my mind. Honestly, am I going to say this? I think it might be my favorite thing we've had tonight, even compared to the Old Forest from 1924. This still Austin single barrel is just, I, I don't even think, like, you know, I said it's my favorite Texas whiskey. It's one of my favorite bourbons. Like, surprisingly, they do a really good bourbon uh, out of any state i've seen outside of indiana and kentucky still austin really does make great bourbon um going back to the 1924 just one last little taste i like the flavor profile 
proof. All three ports we tried tonight were great. They're all contenders. Well, I guess technically the... Well, mm, they're all contenders in my top 10 of the year, which you guys know um, I put together at the end of every year. I go through my favorite. And they, they're not necessarily the favorite like limited edition things. I don't get all those. But the favorite things I've bought or tried on the channel. All three of these tonight are contenders. Um, yeah, Still Austin rocks. Richie says everything I've tried from Still Austin is great. Donnie says, does Still Austin not have the normal Texas funk? Not at all. Not at all. Honestly, if I was blinded with Still Austin, I would guess. I feel like my first instinct guess would be Indiana. It does not have Texas funk at all. And maybe that's what I like about it. Um, Donnie says he likes Texas funk, but Fred agrees that this does not have that. This, again, it tastes like any other good quality bourbon. And that's what I love about them. I love them as a brand. I love their art. They feature local artists on their bottles. There's a local artist's work. Plus, Chris is just amazing. So this is incredible. I should have bought two, honestly. <laughs> Sugar Katie says, still awesome. Single barrel picks are so dense, dark, and complex for not a huge amount of money. Agree with you 100% there. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Nancy Fraley does have some involvement in some of the their styles and how they get their stuff done. So, yeah. Huge fan of Still Austin. We'll see. All three of these might be in my top 10 of the year, but we'll find out. Like I said, coming up soon, we have a live stream with Dark Arts, um, which is my um, favorite bottle that I think I, I, other than, of course, the Heaven Hill, William Heaven Hill, the favorite bottle that I picked up during the festival, that stream is going to be, let me check, April 18th. So a couple weeks away. What is that? Two, three weeks away. I'm going to have the folks from Dark Arts on. We're going to try not only this one, which was seven-year white port wine cask finished bourbon, um, but we're going to try their core lineup, plus maybe a special pour. So stick around. Hit subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. If you enjoyed tonight's show, thank you all for sticking a little bit over time. I appreciate you all dealing with, the, dealing with my video technical issues. I'll try to get them solved before next week. But until next time, this has been Bourbon Bites. Those of you that are part of our after party, everyone tend – oof, that high proof is getting me. Everyone $10 and up on Patreon. Head over to our Discord. We're going to do our after party hangout um, um, slash Bourbon Bites if you guys want to get in on that. Um, but until next time, this has been Bourbon Bites. Cheers. Uh, oh, sorry. So one last comment I want to say. Fred said I wouldn't say Harbinger has a funk. No. Harbinger is also one of the other ones that doesn't have the Kentucky funk for me. Or it's not Kentucky funk. Texas Funk. One of the few, though. One of the few. Still Austin and Harbinger. Okay. Yeah, so if you like our Harbinger, Donnie, you're going to like Still Austin. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Sugar Katie. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next week. And until then, cheers. This has been Bourbon Bites, Whiskey Reviews with an 80s twist. And stay tuned. Some fun stuff coming up. Some very fun guests. Cheers. Cheers.